Welcome to the Wealth Genius Podcast. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Strategies for multifamily real estate investing, mindset, community, success. The Wealth Genius Podcast with your host, the godfather of real estate, Alfonso Quadra, who has expansive experience in business and massive success as a real estate investor. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Let's dive into today's episode. Senor Ben. <laughs> Benjamin. Thanks for, ha- thanks for having me here, Benjamin man. Buttons. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I wanted you on this show. I wanted you on this show because we go way back. We go back. We go way, way back. And I am so excited about everything that you have accomplished. You should be extremely proud of yourself. Just last year, we you, you came and presented at one of our events. And, you know, I just got, I really got to see the, you know, from start to finish yeah. kind of thing. And to me, it's like so impressive. And so I needed you on my show, uh, not just because you're a friend, because I respect the things that you're doing. And I want to know all about it, right? So before we get into the origin story, <laughs> uh, let's go into like kind of what you're doing now. Sure. So we've moved from the multifamily, the small multifamily space to the large multifamily space and ground up development. So currently right now we have uh, just over $250 million of projects owned, operated and under management. Woo, hold on, just take, let's take a moment here. Okay, good. (laughs) Congratulations. I appreciate that. Thank you. And it's uh, right around 400 units Mm -hmm. through the course of three different projects. So we're really excited. We're really, you know, every day is different. Um, You know, we just get up, wake up, attack the day's problems, move forward and get ready to prepare for the next day's problems. And before that kind of just kind of steamrolled into great opportunities and great projects. And just like anybody over the last year, we've just been kind of navigating the waters and keeping our head up and, and moving forward. So yeah, that's kind of what we got going on. And we're really excited. There are two buildings. One one building is directly on the goal line in Hamilton in a fantastic location. So this is land development. Yeah. 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 Land developments, ground up development. So uh, the one right on the goal line is 10 stories, 132 units. Um, and the one on the, the other building is <clears throat> on the new LRT line right on King Street. And that's eight stories, 145 units. But what I'm really excited about is something within those buildings. And what we've done is we were able to take a 400 square foot condo slash apartment, and it operates as 700 square feet without touching the infrastructure of the wow. building. So a lot of people don't really know that. And we've created a strategic partnership with a company called Ori Living out of uh, New York, out of Brooklyn. And what it does, it's movable and expandable furniture. So the bed, it's like a, a traditional Murphy Just bed. Just taking on, a real use and taking the, the, the space and making it functional. Totally, yeah. totally. So it's like taking a Murphy bed. Imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger, 1987, jacked, steroids, all that stuff, right? Like just huge. This is what the Murphy bed is now. So you hit a button from your phone, the bed goes into the ceiling, right? You hit it. So you're on your way, you're on your way home which, you know, and it's a, it's your first date and, you know, your bed is messy and, you know, you, you want to make sure, okay, I, I got my girl, my, my new girlfriend here. Mm-hmm. I don't want her to see right. like how messy I am. You just hit the boom, button, boom, uh, everything. And, you know, you don't want to see too forward thinking. So <laughs> I'm just going to make sure the couch is out, button up, right? So, and then we what we've done is we've outfitted our bachelor uh, studio apartments with three pieces. So one in the bed that goes up into a couch. Now you have an entertainment area or living room. Uh, Two is the entertainment center actually moves to a home office. Um, And three is the walk-in closet that is a a six-foot galley closet on both sides. So you hit a button and it moves out and you can go in, you know, all your clothes and whatnot. So what we found in the small spaces is you lose a lot of storage and closet space, right? And the nicest thing about this too is you can set the depth of the of how far they go so now everything's wheelchair accessible mm. so we're really kind of appealing to a niche market uh i don't say a niche market but a new market right um and people who can af- it's creating affordability in the markets pl- marketplace we're not about affordable housing at lineheart development we're about creating an entry level point for people to get in as condo owners or um a sexy product is your favorite word sexy mm-hmm. product mm-hmm. for renters right at, at a a really nice location and that's kind of what our mantra has been so it's been it's worked out really well and it also helps the bottom line because 
we can market these for 30% more than a normal, a traditional bachelor unit. So does it come with a lot of like common areas? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like if they're, if the unit itself is like relatively small, they're going to spend more time outside of the, outside yeah, of the so unit. on the one building we have, uh, or both buildings, we actually have rooftop patios. Oh, so yeah, that yeah. that's kind of where we were able to, we were able to gain 30% more density in our buildings, but we also create a nice rooftop patio, uh, over the one on the one building, it will overlook the bay. Right. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's that's, a sexy product. That's, that's fun. It's like you get to uh, create. Yeah. I love uh, designing and uh, land development. I, I played Legos as a kid and I remember building all these Lego structures. And, uh, you, you know, when you build, when you're building Lego, you know, the old Lego, it would just give you the pieces. You right. know, now it, it comes with the picture of the thing. I'm like, these kids don't even know what right? Lego is about. There's, they take the imagination out of it. <laughs> but I used to, I used to love uh, uh, building these things and now it, it's lending to the, to, to the real estate. Mm -hmm. So as fun as that is and where you are, it's kind of like surreal to even imagine that you're at this place where you're, you're, you're developing and yeah. you're creating and you're designing and you got the urban landscape and you got the <laughs> patio and you, you got all these things. And uh, did you even know you were gonna be in real estate? Was, it, was this like a dream of yours? Like, like how did it all start? Well, in 2015, I was a college basketball coach, right? Uh, my father was a college basketball coach, university basketball coach, athletic director. So I was always around athletics and um, I was always around university sports. So I knew the power of real estate by, I always knew that if I ever got into coaching, let's let's own a bunch of student rentals so my players can live for free, essentially, right? Yeah. Uh, and so then you I, were trying to solve a problem. I was trying to solve a problem, right? Because mm -hmm. in Canada, we didn't offer scholarships. So we wanted to you know, work our way. So I did research on it. Um, the first book I read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then that really was like, okay, this, I need to make money. How did you hear about this book? I, I always ask that question because it's kind of like, How did you I know, hear about um, this book? for me, uh, someone gave me this book. Yeah. Right. And it, it, it's, so, it's so interesting. It's like, ever since I thought about it that way, I've always gifted books to people. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, you know, all the right people, right? right. Uh, try this book. It's like a recipe. It's like, yeah. try this recipe. I think it was when I came back from the US, when I was uh, working down there as a coach and I came back to Canada, I think it was the head coach who gave me the book. Wow. Yeah, and it and because she was really into alternative incomes. Like you can't have one stream of income or, yeah. you know, she was very forward thinking in that regard and, and it blew my mind. I remember reading the book and calling my mom and was like, okay, I need to buy property like now and rent it out so that <laughs> money can come into me. And my yeah. mom's just like, you know, traditional union. Pay she, off the house. That's right. You know, yeah, all these things. Don't like, have any credit. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So my parents, uh, you know, very, very great careers. My dad is athletic director and a teacher. My mom worked her way up from being a nurse to running a hospital, right? So she, you know, very, very affluent uh, parents and, and hard workers. So, but it was get a mortgage, pay off your via pay off your house, have two vehicles, the traditional Canadian yeah. content dream. Yeah. Well, I never was content with that, right? And I didn't have a lot of money as a basketball coach because we don't pay basketball coaches in Canada. So I was doing side jobs here and there. And then in 2015- yeah, Which is hard because you're passionate about this thing. Totally. And people, you know, you hear it all the time, you know, follow your passion <laughs> and everything is gonna work out, you know? But what if your passion you know, doesn't pay. That's right. right? I mean, uh, the, I mean, the only alternative would be you move to the U.S., which I started that. But yeah. Obama got elected and he changed all the immigration laws the first mm -hmm. his first hundred days, so I couldn't get a visa, so I had to wow. come back. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So one of the things that, like, I always like to say is that passion, like you just said, doesn't equal money, right? And it you, can, it can yeah. eventually. Yeah. It's a hard, it's a long road to that, mm -hmm. but you got to have something. I mean, I was starting out my coaching career, basically sleeping in a closet at my buddy's house, yeah. right? That's how my coaching career really started. And, um, you know, I moved forward with that and, but you have to have something to pay the bills or you can't, you can't live. So I was doing sales jobs and, and whatnot. And my numbers were great in the summer and, you know, December, but soon as September hit all the way to the end of November and then through till March, my numbers were brutal. So I always struggled to keep the jobs or, or you know, on probation, not because I didn't care because my passion was basketball. 
So 2015, I wanted to win. I wanted to win a championship. We were ranked top 10 in the, in the country. I think we were ranked top five in the country at that point. Um, and we were slated, we were hosting the provincial championships. We were slated to go to nationals. And I wanted to win more than my administration did. Right. And I, and, uh, I had a falling out with them and we parted ways. Um, a lot of it was because of me at that point, the things that I did, uh, I don't know, off the court or, or my lifestyle wasn't conducive to what they wanted. And I'm like, I'm winning. So we, we left parted ways and I was devastated. Like I was broken inside and, and moved back and thank God for my parents or else I would have been homeless. Uh, they took me in, they allowed me to get my feet on my ground, on the ground. I met my wife a couple months later and she literally grew flowers in the darkest parts of my soul and saw something in me that I didn't know wow. existed. I, I like, I, I like that visual. She grew flowers in the darkest part of my soul. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So, um, I don't give her enough credit for that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> shout out Samantha. Uh, and, um, so in 2000, we bought her for, we got, after six months of being together, we knew that we were like, I didn't want to be with anybody else. So we bought our first house. Really, she bought the house and I contributed a little bit, but I couldn't contribute very much at the time. I still didn't have, I still wasn't in real estate. I was doing a sales job, didn't really like it. Uh, was coaching on the side back here in Ontario, some high school stuff and um, wasn't making any money really, just enough to survive. So we Airbnb'd the top floor of our two and a half story. And that was kind of our journey. And then we're driving on the radio or driving along on the radio, we hear a voice and we go to a two hour work sh- or two hour seminar. And then from there, we go to a three day workshop and lo and behold, who comes out? You. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Who's so, this crazy guy? Right? So, Who's this crazy guy? <laughs> I mean, you know, you're very like, you're, you, you have such a, a big personality and I really related to that. And I related to your story. Your story is very unique there was parts of it that I could relate to because of where my mentality was at a certain point, um, where it was, you know, crap or get off the pot. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and then we started out, you know, we did, a, we bought a proverbial do turnkey duplex. <laughs> it wasn't turnkey. <laughs> so we learned right from, from that point, we learned through your workshop that you, that you put on, we learned the power of leverage and we started to leverage different things and grow our portfolio. And we, you know, we quickly went, from one door to seven doors in like one year, right? And, and Tell me what's happening in your mind right now uh, for you and your wife. Like, what are you guys saying to each other? Like now you have seven doors, right? I, I remember just, you know, saying this to my wife, like, you know, we're responsible for like all of these people, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, like, it's like so surreal, right? Yeah. So because when you're coaching a, an athletic event or an athletic sport, your end goal for that year is built in for you. It's it's championship or bust, yeah. right? Um, so you have that goal. So every day you work towards that and you get better every day. And so, you know, my wife and I, we had great conversations. She pushed me, she kept me accountable because I'm the dreamer, right? I dream big, I see big picture, I see, you know, five to 10 years down the road where she was like, mm, bring it in, this is what needs to be done. Today. Today, yeah. right? So she really helped me learn how to, you know, attack the day and get that stuff done for the day and move forward. So we didn't even know what we were doing in terms of how much we were amassing and and the pace that we were going at because we just attacked every day the same. It was wake up, do your thing, attack your problems, solve your problems, get ready to do it again the next day. And then when you look back, you all of a sudden have four, four more properties when you start out with one and you're just like, how the heck did that happen? And it was because we put out there that this is what we wanted to do. And, you know, then we got ambitious and, and you know, I hate, I didn't like being a landlord, right? We were too small for me to hire, hire a property manager because we wouldn't mm-hmm. have had any money. So our goal was to get to a hundred doors as quick as we could so that I can hire my former strength and conditioning coach to be my property manager. Um, Cause he's not making any money. He's either. not making any money either. <laughs> so it was like, we had this whole plan. And- Guys, uh, but by the way, I want to make sure if you can support Canadian basketball in any way, uh, yeah, I want, I want you guys to, there's there some, can we all like donate somewhere? Right? There's, I, I always tell people the best way to donate is just donate for yeah. youth, youth sports. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. But the problem is like, we don't operate 
like the US does in terms of the sports arena as a business, right? And I spent a lot of time down there. So I always tried to do things as a business and that really tailored what I was doing in the athletic world. And now I got into this real estate world and I was my own boss. So any idea that I had, I could put forth any fun rate, any you know, opportunity that we wanted to use to raise funds and capital raise, I could do that, mm -hmm. you know? So we began doing that. And then um, one of our, our, one of my colleagues, and I would say, you know, one of my greatest, not a competitor, but I dr it drives me and I can call him and we talk all the time about just different things. He ended up saying, well, why don't we do this together? And so we went, we had a 13 unit that we were, so we had a, a crack house we were gonna turn to a 13 unit. And then we got another one from the relationship I built on the 13 unit to do 30 units. And all of a sudden now we were at 50 doors. However, my architect said, why don't you get this piece of land that's right here and you can get 60 doors there. So we did that. And then it was like, there was two in between. Well, if you got the two in between, you'd be able to get 120 doors. All right, let's do that. And I think part of this whole scenario was nothing really scared me what I was getting, getting into. And I think that comes from coaching and like, you cannot be afraid to fail, but you have to be afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, it's such a, like a cliche term, but I enjoyed losing games because I knew we were going to get better from it. Right? Like if you lost the game by four points, that was probably my fault as a coach. So now I'm going to go back through the film 15 different times and see where I screwed up, where I did wrong. So I took that into my real estate and I wrote everything down, right? So what happened well in this deal and this deal and this deal? And so- what so, has, so kind of creating your own playbook. That's right. So what has happened throughout this process is you gain the confidence, right? The only way that you have confidence is by doing it. Like you can't just say, I can't go read a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad and say, oh, okay, I'm good. I'm good. Let's do this. <laughs> I can do all this stuff. You may have that motivation to do that, but the confidence is going to come when the discipline is there, when you fail and you learn from your failures and you learn from your mistakes. So that was always kind of what how we did things. And we just kept moving forward and opportunity came up here and opportunity came up there. And, you know, we took the opportunities and this is where we're sitting now. And, and our... Uh, Lionheart Development, which is my development company, we have a goal by the end of 2025 to have a billion dollars of assets under management. Let's go. Right. I love that. Let's do it. One <laughs> second. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I want to congratulate you for that because people, it. I, it's the ambitious people, it's the dreamers that actually propel everything forward, yeah. right? If it wasn't for one man, putting in his mind that it's gonna, we're gonna have 100,000 people on Mars, we wouldn't have this race to the moon. Exactly. Right? Like now exactly. everyone's like, well, I wanna go to the moon. Like, uh, you know, of course we wanna go to the moon. Right, why yeah, wouldn't but we? Why, wouldn't we, why didn't we go to the moon since the last time we went to the moon, right? <laughs> it's because people stop dreaming. They start being ambitious. Yeah. And that's kind of what moves everything forward. And this is amazing. What's your favorite part about real estate? Oh, my favorite part about real estate, I think is, Besides the the revenue generation that you can do, like the day-to-day -day operations of solving problems, I think that's my favorite part. Because yeah. if you think you're going to get into real estate and it's easy, you're crazy. If you think you're going to get into real estate and not have hiccups during projects and not have bumps with tenants, you're crazy. But you got to be able to solve problems quick on your feet. And I credit my upbringing. I credit my first career in enabling me to see a problem adjust and move forward very, very quickly. Yeah, I agree. People ask me, Alfonso, what's the book that I got to read? Like, what, 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 like, what's the book? And I said, you know, you want to get, you want to grow your portfolio? Are you really serious? Yeah. They're like, yeah, what's the book? What's the book? I said, read leadership books. Yep. What? Leadership? That's so boring. You know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but those are the skills that you have to work on because you're gonna be dealing with, if you wanna scale anything, you gotta, now you enter people. That's right. Right? And I think you, 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 you have probably built a lot of leadership over the years with your basketball background, mm -hmm. where not only uh, as a team player, where you have to, you know, there's gotta be a lot of leadership. If you wanna, if you wanna play with a, within a team, you gotta, you gotta be a leader. Yeah. But with the coaching, leading a group of, of people getting them to the finish line. That's right. right? And it's, this is exactly what you're doing. Uh, yeah, and I, like to touch on that point, a couple of things that I always said to my players 
was, or their parents when we recruit them, because I'm essentially asking somebody to give me your 18 year old son for a couple of years, and then I'll help him get through the world. And I always told them, I can't guarantee you playing time. I can't guarantee you a fantastic experience, but what I can guarantee you is that when your son comes through my doors and when he leaves my door, he'll come through my doors as a boy. And when he leaves my doors, he's going to be a man. So I've approached my whole business like that, my whole team. And I always tell people that it's not about the best players. So you can go get the, if you're redoing a unit, right? You can go get the best contractor. You can go get the best painter, the best plumber. They may not be the right people for you. So stop worrying about the best and go get the right ones because that makes a world of difference, right? And, and I think, you know, you can't just sit there and say, oh yeah, they're the best. So I'm going to go with them. Like on our, one of our, on our major developments, we've partnered and hi hired and partnered with a major development company out of Toronto, but they're very prevalent in the mid-rise game and they're family-owned business. And when I sat down with them, our morals, our values, and our goals aligned. Mm. And they may not be the best out there, but they may not, they're definitely not the, you know, they're, they're definitely not the cheapest, right? But none of them are, but they're the right for my business and they're going to help my business go from point A to point B to point C to point D, right? And I think we get caught up in accolades versus the actual character of the people you're working with. And that's where the leadership part comes in. You have to, with your constituents, you have to find the right ones for you. It's like a puzzle. It's like Legos, right? Mm -hmm. We have to, we don't have it built for us. There's no picture in front of us. We have to imagine what we can build with this Lego set. And it's about the right pieces going together to get to up here. And, and that's kind of how we run our business. What was the hardest part about this whole journey for you or something that you had to overcome? Uh, the time, the effort, right? I mean, when now you're your own boss and you're accountable to your family, you're accountable to your watch and coaching, you always had your schedule built in. Your sales, you always had your calls built in. This one is on you, right? So the hardest thing for me now that I have two boys is to get on a phone call at night when they're still awake, is to drop them off at daycare. Like I just, I love my kids and I want to be mm -hmm. with them. And, and, you know, my wife and I, we're really active with our, with our family. Um, it's something that we, we strive to do on a regular basis. We want to show our boys that there's a world out there that you can go and own, right? So if you raise these kids right, I want them to be better than me, like any father for does, sure, right? For and sure. I think- How old are your kids? Uh, three and a half and one and a half. Oh my God, right? yeah, they're just babies. They're babies, <laughs> they're babies. But we wanna show that we're active and that they're active because it's important. Um, but it's leaving them. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, like a lot of real estate meetups are at night and and on weekends and stuff. And it's hard. It's hard mm -hmm. to leave them. It's hard to, especially now my four, my he's almost four. He knows when I'm gone and he asks me, come home and do these things. And it's just like, I'm sure you've experienced oh, yeah, that yeah, too. It's, like, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> but, but then I look at you, right? Mm -hmm. I look at your kids and, and mm -hmm. what you've cultivated with them, the relationship that you have. And it's inspiring that, you know, what your daughter's doing and what they're, what your, both your daughters are doing. And, and it's something I'm like, I want my kids to want to do that. And I don't know, my dad never pushed us into basketball. My brother ended up being a professional basketball player. He's a professional coach, right? You just want to, when you raise your kids, right? They want to be like their dad. Yeah. It's just the reality of it. Right. And so I'm really excited for that. I want to show my kids proper, but that's the hardest thing is to balance the family life because to me, the family life is more important than the professional life. Because without a good home to go to and a good family, you're going to struggle in that avenue. But if this house is taken care of, this one will take care of itself. And what are you teaching your kids? Like, you know, I know they're three and one. What, how are you setting it up for this generational trans wealth transfer, right? Right. So... You know, you mentioned the Legos earlier, mm -hmm. right? So we do a lot of blocks and building blocks. And even my my one and a half year old is starting to build blocks. We challenge our kids, right? We don't, um, you know, we're, we're not the type of parents is, I think it's called gentle parenting. Mm -hmm. That's not me, right? It's just <laughs> not my, my, my style. Um, you know, I'm hard on my boys. They fall, get up, you're okay. Yeah. Unless you're like, uh, unless they fall and hit their head or something like that. But if you fall, get up, you're good, right? So we wanna build in resiliency. Because I really believe that this next generation, if you raise 
warriors, they're going to destroy this next generation. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you have the AI overlords coming for us. Yeah. <laughs> Starnet. <laughs> the, 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 Skynet. The, yeah. Uh, Star, Starlink. Starlink, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I heard now that they, they, they worked on the microchip in oh your my brain. Oh, goodness. So um, the young people that are learning skills, like those soft skills, yeah. uh, you know, very young, and the the parents that are going to be present and guide them yeah. uh, towards a different path than that has been taught in the past. Mm -hmm. I think those are the young people that uh, I think are, are going to be very successful in the future. Yeah. So turning to real estate again mm -hmm. and land development and everything that you're doing, obviously you've built a business. So what are your your tips for building a business? Uh, I think for the if I could do it all over again, I would have hired a bookkeeper slash assistant right oh away. Oh my God, thank God for saying that. <laughs> right away, right? Like right away. So, yes, yes. you know, we're going through our books right now yeah. and, you know, end of year. It, there's something to be said about the entrepreneur. Yes. Right? And we're the visionary and your books are always a mess. Oh God. <laughs> Right, so that would be, if I could start all over again, I would pay, and just even just contract yeah, it out. Just yeah. contract somebody yeah. out two hours or two, three hours a week. You can drop them everything off and you can move forward. Yeah, and we yeah. did a lot of flips. We had like four flips going yeah. on and four burrs going on yeah. at once. So you can imagine, and you're like, okay, I'll get to it later, I'll get to it later. Well, the biggest pill to swallow is when you go to some of these people that are good and they give you the price, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna pay that. Yeah. Uh, and then you end up paying double because you're you, you're a mess. That's right, right. And that's so right. I love that piece of advice. Yeah, that's the best. If you get if you're getting into real estate, whether you have one property or not, get a bookkeeper that knows real estate and that can run QuickBooks. Don't even, like I know people use other softwares, but most accountants use QuickBooks. So just get somebody who's familiar with QuickBooks. Let that go. And the second thing, find if in terms of building your business, find a personal brand. Because I'm Coach Ben, I'm loud, I'm I'm not obnoxious anymore. My wife has mm -hmm. kind of tamed that part of me, but I love the sound of my own voice, right? So I'm out there, I wanna speak, I wanna help as many people as I possibly can because I've come up through a system like from you who is all about give back, mm -hmm. right? And the best way to give back is to just tell your story. So, but have your personal brand and own that personal brand and move forward with that. And then your business will follow that. Love it, love it so much. Thank you for coming here. Oh my I God, mean, thanks for having I me. I knew we needed to do this, we <laughs> needed to do this. Uh, lastly, and I don't wanna forget, but everyone has like a mantra, everyone has a quote that they live by. Yeah. For me, it's uh, success is what you attract by the person you become, right. Tim Rohn. It's, this has been you know, evident in my entire life but what's, what's that quote for you? So it's kind of similar to yours, but um, it's something that I was, I kind of came up with and it's been a bit of different, different things. But when I was coaching, I, I had a really high level player and he was trying to make a decision on where to go to, to take his next step. He ended up actually going to the Olympics. And, wow. And yeah, last year, last Olympics. So I said to him, I said, listen, man, at the end of the day, Phil, you got to do what's best for you. So when you look in the mirror, like you can disappoint, you can disappoint your girlfriend, your parents, your brother, your sister, your loved ones, your dog, your dog, right? <laughs> they will always love you. Will they be disappointed in your decision? For sure. But in a two weeks, three weeks time, you're healthy. They're going to love you, right? The person you cannot disappoint is the person looking back at you in the mirror. And that has always stuck with me. Once I said that to me, it's stuck with me. It's kind of been my whole thing. It's like, I can disappoint my wife. I mean, I do it frequently, <laughs> right? I think we all do, but, but you know, I can disappoint my parents, my dogs, my kids, they're gonna love me, but I can't live with my own disappointment. Yeah. I can't live with my own, like we're, gonna, we're all gonna have regrets. So, but you gotta be able to say in the mirror that you're proud of yourself, right? Yeah. You gotta be able to say, I'm gonna move forward. So. You can disappoint everybody in your life, but you cannot disappoint the man or the woman looking back at you in the mirror. Love it. Uh, you have inspired us and uh, all your information will be down below so that, you know they can get a hold of you. Yep. Thank you for coming. And we were gonna, we're gonna do this. I think we're gonna do a part two. Oh, I love I it. Know, we gotta do I it. I love all it. All right, guys, all that right. was it. Let's go.
Thanks for listening to the Wealth Genius Podcast. If you have a question or comment about something you heard today, reach out to The Godfather via social media or email him anytime. All that information is in the show notes. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Wealth Genius Podcast. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Until next time, see you at the top.